How are you all doing tonight? Well, this is great. We're having a good time, right? My mom was supposed to be here tonight, right? Uh, but she couldn't make it, so uh, she left me in this answering machine message. Joseph, it's your mother. Joseph, pick up the phone. Joseph, where are you? Oh, Joseph, where are you? Oh my God, Joseph, pick up the phone. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, Joseph, pick up the phone. Well, I just called the chat. I guess you're not in. I'll call back later. You see, I had a tense relationship with my family. I remember 1967 was a particularly difficult year. I sat my parents down and I told them that I had decided I was not going to go to Vietnam. And you know, they were okay with that. I was eight at the time. <laughs> so, you know, there, I guess it was that I wasn't a lot of things I was interested in as a kid. So, to fill my time, I became a pervert. <laughs> now, it all started one day when I, uh, I, 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 I snuck into my sister's bedroom and I gave her Malibu Barbie, a Play-Doh breast enhancement. <laughs> From there it was only a short step to me drawing dirty pictures of the Flintstones. <laughs> yeah, my parents didn't have a clue what I was doing up in my room. My dad came up one day and he sees the drawing on the floor. He says, what the hell is that? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's uh, Wilma and Betty. Uh, Wrestling and uh, Welsh's grape jelly while Fred and Barney watch. <laughs> well, okay, uh, have fun. I had a strange childhood. I had this one friend, John Gifford. Now, this guy was a premier showman. He actually got people to pay to see his German ride his matchbox stingray through the loop de loop. How he found a helmet and goggles that small, I'll never know. <laughs> but I'm positive that he stole the cake from his sister's Supergirl skipper. <laughs> so my father was a <clears throat> North New Jersey police officer during the riots. He'd come home in full riot gear, helmet, flak jacket, nightstick, and gun. And then he'd pick a fight with my mom. <laughs> and you know how that made me feel as a kid? I, I thought, wow, my mom must be a great fighter. <laughs> See, and then I saw on TV there were lots of policemen in riot gear. You know, and it was, it was comforting. Because it was reassuring to know that there were hundreds of other guys out there afraid of their wives too. <laughs> the guy's afraid of his wife, right? <sighs> well, so my parents used to fight all the time. Boy, did they fight. Wow. So up in my room, to drown out the noise, I would make up funny voices. Willoughby, bring me the atomic sauerkraut soda pop. But yeah, boss. Well, this concerned my mom a lot. I hear her downstairs talking to her friends. Oh my God, what is he doing up there? Oh, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I hope he's only gay. <laughs> Of course, it wasn't until I was a theater major in college that I even met again. Yeah, before each performance of A Midsummer Night's Dream, Oberon, king of the fairies, would tweak my nipples for good luck. <laughs> I, I made the mistake of telling my wife this, and now she has to tweak my nipples before I go on stage. Oh, man. Starting to like it. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You guys are great.
Dog Productions. Colonial-rama is supported by Bear Manor Media, publisher of the authorized biography of cartoon voice legend Dawes Butler, characters actor. Yogi Bear. For more information, check out BearManorMedia.com. <laughs> 